So I had a bit of a request to go through my educational journey and this is the second in a series of videos all the way from secondary school all the way through my degree and getting my jobs. And I hope this video will be particularly useful if you're applying for UCAS this year or if you're picking your A-levels or your options. This is the second in a series of video where I'm going all the way from secondary school all the way through to getting a job. And this one's going to be about making choices and my advice to you as young people making those difficult choices about your options in school, your A-levels and then your degrees. There are three stages in school where you need to make some choices that are going to affect what you can and can't do for the rest of your life. And they're really important choices. But I'd urge you not to worry about them too much. I'd urge you not to stress about them, but try your best to pick things that are going to enable you to keep as many doors open as possible. So those stages are picking your options in year nine, picking your A-levels, and then applying to degrees or to further learning or jobs. So UCAS. <laughs> It's something I say quite a lot, and it is true, I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I think for some people, they know quite early on in their life exactly what they want to do with their life. And then I think that there's very clear and obvious pathways open to you. But if you're not like that, and if you're sitting there thinking, I'm not sure yet, well, I think that's okay, and you shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself to make a decision and go down a certain pathway. There's almost certainly going to be a whole load of different careers available to you that don't exist yet. And certainly where you are right now, you don't know of all the options that exist. So my best advice to you at every single one of those points is to pick things that you'll really enjoy. There's two reasons for that. The first is that if you enjoy something, you'll study harder at it and you will get better grades. And the second reason is that you're effectively keeping doors open to pathways related to things that you enjoy. For me, picking A-levels was impossible. It was really, really tough. There was one subject that I knew I wanted to do at A-level, and that was art. And I kind of knew I really enjoyed physics, and that's ended up leading me where I am today. And I kind of felt like I should do maths, because I, I enjoyed it, and I was good at it. And then I picked psychology. I picked psychology because I thought that it would be quite different to the rest and that it probably wouldn't be as stressful as the rest. And it fit in the kind of blocking structure that my school had. It's always been a disappointment to me that I couldn't do chemistry and I couldn't do history and I couldn't do further maths. I really wanted to do everything. <laughs> I would have been fine and happy doing English as well. And in fact, I really didn't want to leave any of those subjects behind. And it feels like when you're 16, 17, 18, that you're kind of losing something that you really enjoy, not being able to study everything that you love. But life's not like that. Actually, you can always pick up a history book. You can always learn some chemistry. There's no reason to say that you can't do, you can't learn as much as you want to. It's just that those are the exams you're going to end up taking. But that being said, you are specialising. As soon as you pick your A-levels, you're specialising down very narrow paths. And that's a joy of it. That's a really amazing thing that happens in our school communities, that people start to become specialists. People start to gain skills that other people don't have. And that's what you should see your A-levels as being. Absolutely. If you know you're interested in medicine, then yeah, you're probably going to study chemistry, biology and maths because those are the typical things that medical schools look for. Yes, if you want to do engineering, then you should do maths, further maths and physics. Absolutely. If you want to do computer science, you should do maths, physics and computer science and maybe a fourth one in any of those options if you like. Or an EPQ is an amazing thing to do. But you shouldn't really worry about that. If you're not sure or you know you want to do something related to maths and physics, then you should do maths and physics and whatever else in you enjoy. If you know you want to be a scientist then you should probably do all three sciences and maths you know there are loads of different options if you just know you're interested in the arts then do art do design and do a performing art there's nothing wrong with any of those groups of options enjoy making those options and just pick things that you love pick things you know you're going to love yes you should look at where you want to go after and you should think about if you want to go to russell group universities you need two facilitating subjects so you need some academic subjects you need a, a science and a maths probably but most importantly pick things that you're going to love pick things that are going to keep doors open for you see what i did after a levels after i did arts maths physics and psychology I did a art and design foundation course because I really couldn't decide and I'd heard about this is the thing to do if you're interested in art and that's where you'll decide what art route to go down and actually then I applied to architecture and honestly the way I found out about architecture was sitting in my careers library looking through a list of university courses and I thought I'll look up archaeology I'm kind of interested in history I looked up archaeology and just next to that was architecture and I read about it and I thought yeah do you know what that sounds like me that sounds like a bit of everything that sounds like somebody who's interested in the sciences and interested in art so it sounds like a bit of a kind of polymath subject 
and that's really been me all the all the way through my education career is not wanting to stop learning different areas and architecture did do that it did allow me to be interested in art interested in the sciences interested in a wide variety of different education and so it kept doors open for me i hope this has been useful for you let me know what you think let me know your thoughts and feelings about making these choices in the comment section below i'm really interested to hear about them so i can make more content to help you